Gangbusters, brought to you by the makers of Sloan's Liniment. Calling the police, calling the G-men, calling all Americans to war on the underworld. Tonight, the case of the Black Bottom Bandit, the gay young southern killer who used two weapons, a machine gun and a clarinet. But before we begin tonight's case, let's consider the cases of all you folks who find that March dampness almost always plagues you with muscular aches and pains. Well, there's no need for you to endure the discomfort of a stiff neck or a sore shoulder. Just reach for your bottle of Sloan's liniment and enjoy the same quick and comforting relief that Sloan's has brought to thousands during the past 50 years. You'll find Sloan's the easiest of liniments to apply. All you have to do is pat on Sloan's liniment, that's all. Pat Sloan's on the sore place and relax. In practically no time at all, you'll feel a gentle and beneficial warmth. The sign that Sloan's liniment is going to work just like a heat treatment to loosen your tight and aching muscles. Because Sloan's liniment brings you this relief, the relief you want. You should have a bottle of this reliable friend in need on your medicine shelf at all times. For muscular distress often strikes without warning. And the faster you apply Sloan's liniment, the sooner you'll be your old self once again. So tonight, after our thrilling gangbuster dramatization, take a look at your medicine shelf. If you see that your bottle of Sloan's is almost empty, be sure to stop in at your druggist's for Sloan's liniment first thing tomorrow. Now picture our setting as a special office turned over to gangbusters by Commissioner Louis J. Valentine of the New York City Police. Colonel H. Norman Schwarzkopf, now serving with the United States Army, interviews by proxy Superintendent George Rayer of the New Orleans Police Department. Colonel Schwarzkopf. Superintendent Rayer, you say that music and dancing played an important part in tonight's case? A very important part, Colonel Schwarzkopf. That's what I want out of life. Music, dancing. To have a hundred girls falling on my neck. Hear them call me the big shot. All I need is the money. And I'll get that with this. Yes, Colonel, in an effort to be considered a big shot, Earl Joyner turned gunman, but was captured. Then on May 13th, 1932, he shot one of the prison guards and escaped with two other convicts. They fled to Texas, where Earl Joyner set up headquarters in a house on the outskirts of Houston. Cut it, will you, Joyner? Playing that same thing over and over again? Yeah, lay off, Joyner. Give me the willies. You guys don't appreciate hot music. I'd appreciate some of that money you said we was going to make. Me too. Well, what do you think I've been doing the past three weeks? I got plans all drawn up and plotted out. I got the blueprints of the inside of every bank within a hundred miles. And how about going into action? Ah, cut the kid and join it. Lay off the clarinet and talk with us, will you? Okay. To lead the kind of life I want, boys... Nightclubs, baby dolls, expensive clothes. You gotta have money. But we're not going after chicken feed, we're going after the stuff. Now, pull your chairs up the table and I'll lay the plans out and show you stuff. I got every detail worked out. Now, take a look at these joints. Ah, say. Say, this is something. Yeah. Yeah, I knew you had brains, Joyner, but I didn't know you had this many. <laughs> I'm going to explain those plans to you in just a minute. But first, here's the basis of my planet. Yeah. We're going to have machine guns, and we're going to use them. We're going to mow people down. We aren't going to stop and tell people to get out of the way. We're going to shoot them out of the way. All right, now, look at these plans. Bank after bank, we're going to take. And we're going to take them over with machine gun bullets. We'll shoot up the bank so they won't even know what we look like. Emergency. Bank robbery at First National Bank, Springs, Texas. Three gunmen armed with machine guns shut up bank as they fled. Urgent. A la Louisiana bank robbed of over $6,000. Warning. 
criminals have machine guns? All police, merchants and farmers bank, Grapeland, Texas, raided by machine gun bandits. Okay, boys, give the people in this bank another plan. This sure is a life. Plenty of dough and one nightclub after another. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Look at Blondie over there, Jordan. <laughs> Look at Blondie. Yeah. <laughs> boy, she's swinging out. The crest of the waves, boys. We're riding the crest of the waves. <laughs> hey, what's the matter? No music? Oh, we gotta have music. Hey, leader. Uh, band leader. Band leader, come here. Yes, sir. You want me? Yeah. I want you to play Black Bottom. It's my favorite song. But we just played that a few minutes ago. It's all right. I'm paying, ain't it? Here's a hundred bucks. Oh, thank you, sir. Now, just a second. Here's another hundred. Oh, thanks. You're talking to a big shot now. Go on, play the black bottom and play it hot. Yes, yes. sir. I'll play that number right away, sir. All right, boys. The black bottom and give it everything you got. <laughs> Now, Joyner, I think we've shot up more banks in a shorter time than any gang that ever operated. We ought to get a good haul from this bank in Fontatula. <laughs> uh, How does it feel to have a rope tied around your neck, Mr. Bank President? <laughs> he doesn't look much like a bank president now, does he? Oh, it's the biggest stunt you ever pulled, Joyner. Kidnapping this guy from his house to make him open the bank vault. But you better loosen that rope a bit. You don't want the guy to croak on us before we get to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> hey, which road do I take, Joyner? On to the left. Banks up the street to the left, sir. Okay. Well, for Pete's sake. Say, what is this? All these wagons and stuff. Pull up, pull up. Oh, girl. Howdy, dear. How's the coming? Back up, girl. Back up, there's a girl. Here, come on. Gee, gee, gee. Must be market day. Yeah, and the sap farmer's got the whole road blocked for the horses and wagons. They're all around the bank, too. They'd spot us in a second if we try to go in. Well, it looks like the job's off. A couple of those farmers are looking this way. They may spot this bank president in the car and know something's wrong. We better get out of here. Turn up the side road fast. That's what I call a rotten freak. Yeah, now we can't use this bank president. What are we going to do with him? Chuck him out. He may go to the cops. He's got a wife and kids. If he puts the cops on our trail, we'll come back and kill him. You hear that, mister? Y yes. Okay, yes. get out. I, I can't. If you slow down... Slow I... down nothing. Jump. I'll be killed. You don't want to jump. Oh, well, I'll kick you. You have to slow down first, please. We're going 60. Oh, oh you get hurt, the better I like it. Oh. Come on, fellas, kick him out. Ah. Oh. <laughs> See him go flying? Yeah, bounce for 20 yards. Well, where to now, Joyner? I don't know. Hey, Wait. There's one town I haven't seen yet, New Orleans. That's right. They say they got some swell dance halls down there. Yeah, and Creole babes. That's where we'll head, Davis. New Orleans, the land of dreams. We'll bust it wide open. <laughs> Look out! Open fire, man. Pass! Imagine they sideswept our car without crashing. Any of your cars and after them. Come on. Come on. Come on. Step on it. They're getting away. Turn on that searchlight. They got around that bend in the road. Look. Looks like a trail of gasoline in the center of the road. We must have plugged their gas tank. They can't get far. They can't get off this road. Swamps on both sides. Faster. Faster. Hold it. Car up ahead. It's stopped. Pull up to it. We'll be set to shoot. It's the bandit car. There are the bullet holes. Car's empty. Flash that searchlight around. Right, Sheriff. 
I don't see anything. Wait. Turn the light back to the left a bit. Yeah? Those cypress trees, the other side of the canal. By George, there they are, climbing up the other side of the canal. There they are. Get them. Too late. They got away through the tree. Pete. Yes, Sheriff. Race to the nearest phone. Have men approach that area from the other side of the swamp. Yes, sir. The rest of you come with me. We're going to swim this canal after. Right, sir. Yes, I Certainly exciting action, Superintendent Rayer. But before you tell us the outcome of this chase, Frank Gallup has a word from our sponsor. Day and night, freight trains and motor trucks are crisscrossing this country freighting the materials of war to the men of the services. The men who handle these tough jobs deserve the thanks of the nation. With all the rest of you who are in important jobs, they've taken a pledge that now work comes first. That means staying in good health so that you can do a good job. I guess that's why so many thousands on thousands of you now keep a bottle of reliable Sloan's liniment in your locker at the plant, as well as another bottle on your medicine shelf at home. For you've learned from bitter experience that muscular aches and pains often strike suddenly, especially when you're on a strenuous and tiring job. Sloan's, you'll learn, takes hardly any time at all to apply. During your lunchtime or after work, all you have to do is pat on some Sloan's liniment and then relax for a short while. Sloan's does the rest, working like a heat treatment to help you find the quick and comforting relief you want so much. In many jobs, you're liable to suffer muscular distress from all three of the main causes, overexertion, accident, or overexposure to chilling weather. Sloan's a real friend in need. Will help loosen and relax your sore and aching muscles, whatever the cause. Remember that when you use Sloan's liniment, you needn't endure hard and painful rubbing or massage. All you do is pat on this world-famous liniment. Just pat Sloan's on the sore place and relax. If you've never used Sloan's liniment, you'd do well to stop in at your favorite druggist's on your way home from work tomorrow and get a bottle. If you're one of the millions of Sloan's regular users, always be sure you have a fairly full bottle. An empty bottle of Sloan's is no help at all when you want relief in a hurry. Now back to our interview at headquarters. Now, Superintendent Ryer, did Earl Joyner and his gang escape the posse that waylaid them in the swamps? Yes, Colonel Schwarzkopf, they did escape. And they seemed to disappear off the face of the map. Three weeks later, Chief Grosh of the New Orleans Police and his Lieutenant Schwem we're covering the nightclubs of New Orleans. It's after two in the morning, Chief Gross. Don't you think we ought to call it a night? Oh, I guess so, Lieutenant Schwem. Perhaps we are on a wild goose chase. Yeah. But I want to get that killer, Joyner. We've been covering every New Orleans nightclub for weeks now. Joyner was here. We'd run into him before this. Yeah, but nightclubs and girls and hot music are his weakness. Wait, Swim. There's the Kit Kat Club up the street. We haven't covered that for a couple of hours. I've never seen anybody so persistent as you are, Chief Grosh. Well, you got on a trail of someone. Joyner is a maniac with a gun. His whole gang is. Now, oh, well, we can give the place the once over from this door. Quite a crowd inside. Yeah, but no sign. Lieutenant. Yes, Chief? That table in the far corner. Those men sitting at it. Travis. And Morgan. But I, I don't see Joyner. No, no, I don't either. Problem is, how are we going to approach that table without them spotting us? They'll have guns. If they ever start shooting at all these people inside. Yeah, it'll be a wholesale murder. But look, I got an idea. What, Chief? Here's a couple of waiters' aprons. We'll put these on. Say, that's a swell idea. Yeah. Come on, tie this string in back of me. Yeah. yeah but uh, think we ought to carry a tray or something? No, these aprons should do the trick. No. I'm all set. Now remember, Schwem, we've got to grab them before they can pull a gun. Yeah. If they spot us before we grab them, jump for the table. Right. Knock it over on top of them and pull the tablecloth over the head. Right. All right. Through this door. Now. 
Now, not too fast, Schwim. Not too fast. Right. If they spot us, die for the table. Morgan's looking this way. Yeah. Keep walking. A few more steps and... He sees us. Die for them, fast. Right. Drop it. Drop, drop that gun. Okay, okay, don't shoot. I give up. Put cuffs on him, Lieutenant. All right. Gosh, that fellow dancing for that exit. It's Joyner. Hold these fellas. I'll go get him. All right. No, you don't, Joyner. Come here. Let go of me. Let go of me. You want to put up a fight, eh? No, no, I give up. I give up. You bet your life you do. Come on, Joyner. Start walking. Your dancing days are over. Colonel Schwarzkopf, Joyner and his gang were sentenced from 27 to 46 years in Angola prison. But less than a year later, September 10th, 1933, Life. But they're wrong. I built up a new gang right here inside the prison. Some of the worst killers in the country. <laughs> Wouldn't want to meet us up a dark alley, would you? Well, you will. We're getting out today during the ball game. We got guns and we're getting out during the ball game. Okay, boys, now's the time. Shoot in the crowd. Kill him, kill him. Wait for the front gate, come on. There's a guy. Shoot him. Back to this building. Visitor running this way. Plug him, don't wait. Plug him. Okay, hold it. Yeah? Well, what is it, Joanna? The captain of the guard should be at the front gate. He'll have the keys. There he is. Now, he don't see us. Kill him. That got him. We'll grab the keys and get out of here. Come on, fast. Statewide alarm. Emergency. Thirteen convicts, led by Earl Joyner, have shot way out of prison. Three men killed, including captain of guards. Killers are heading north. Lock all roads and form posses. Special bulletin to all posses. Eight of escaped convicts were surrounded and captured after gun battle near Rolling Creek. One convict killed. This accounts for eight of the 13 who escaped. Sheriff's Posse reporting. Four more convicts have just been recaptured when they wrecked car near White's Gully. They are now on their way back to jail. To all Posse's in the field, Earl Joyner, only convict at large, has escaped into wooded swamp on outskirts of Houston. All Posse's close in. After me. But only stop raining so I can see something. It's so dark. I've got to find some place to hide till morning. Oh! Oh! Oh, my face! Bob wire fence! Oh! Oh, I'm all cut. I'm bloody. Keep going, man. You went this way. Keep going. Right after me. Which way to turn? Gotta find some place to hide. What's that? Pigs. A pig pen. Maybe I can hide in there. Get out of my way, you rotten pigs. If I can bury myself in the muck in this pig pen. Ooh, my face. Come on, man. Try to get far away. That's right, sir. Flash your lights around. Listen to the pigs. I wonder what they're so excited about. Probably the storm. Turn your light on them. Yeah, I guess so. It looks like a barn over there. It might be in that barn. Come on. Right. Get your snoot out of my face, you dumb pig. Oh, my face hurts. But I fooled the cops. Yeah, I'll hide here all night and then I'll get away. I gotta get away. Yeah? Oh, who are you? What, what do you mean bursting into my house this way? Shut up, farmer. Open your mouth and I'll kill you. Yeah, all 
all right. You're going to hide me, see? I need clothes and food, and I need medicine for my face. It's all cut and swollen. Those cops got me crazy, running and hiding and running. I can't stand no more. I'll kill you. I'll kill everyone. What's that? Coppers outside in the car. Yeah. You want to die? You want to die right now? No, no, no. And don't tell them about me. I got to hide. I can... Oh, those rafters up by the ceiling. I can climb up there. All right. Keep facing me while I climb up. Yes, yes. One bullet will kill you, and I got plenty. No, no, don't, don't shoot. There. I'm all set now, Farmer. A gun's pointing right down at you through these cracks in the lumber. Hello, Jim. Uh, hello, Sheriff. Jim, we're looking for an escaped convict. You seen anything of a stranger around these parts? Well, no, Sheriff. Well, he's here somewhere. We've been trailing him two days now. He won't stop till we get him. Yes. Hey, what's that? Uh, what? That noise. Hey, from the rafters up there. The rafters? I, I didn't hear anything. <clears throat> Probably some uh, chipmunks got in up there. Jim, you feeling all right? Well, yes. Face is pale. Well, I'm, I'm all right. You say you haven't seen anything of a stranger at all? Oh, no, Sheriff, no. I... Well, then I won't take up any more of your time. All right, boys. Outside. Yes, sure. All right, all right let's go. Yeah, I'll... I'll be going, Jim. Hey. But I'm taking you with me. All right, Jim. You can talk now. He's in there, isn't he? Yes, yes, Sheriff. Up, up on the rafters. He's got a gun. I knew something was wrong the way you acted. You'll get him. Keep your guns on that door, men. Right. Join us in there. If he tries to come out, shoot. Right. Bill, you come with me. Right. We'll go around back and climb in through the window. Come on. Here we are. I'll go in first. Careful, Sheriff. He's got a gun. Ready now. Okay, Joyner. We have you surrounded. Come down from those rafters or I'll shoot up through the floor. I'll give you just five seconds, Joyner. Yeah, look. His hand falling over the side of the plank. Dropping his gun. Wait a minute. Maybe a trick. Oh. See his body. Slipping off the rafters. He's falling down. Look out. He's unconscious. What's wrong with him? Roll him over. Look at his face. It's fallen twice its right size. You can't even see his eyes. He's burning up with fever. It's all infected. Blood poisoning? Most likely. What a sight he is. Yes. Looks like Joyner outsmarted himself for good this time. All right. Help me lift him. Yep. We'll get him to the prison hospital. Right. And Earl Joyner had outsmarted himself, Colonel Schwartzkopf. Though he always claimed he'd never die in a prison, he died in the prison hospital two days later, and from infection on his face caused by his hiding in the pig pen, and the pigs sloshing the filth all over him. This has been a powerful case, Superintendent Ryer. Here was a young man who deliberately turned to crime at the age of 22. How old was he when he died? Just 23. He thought he was too smart for the law, and he really met his death from the pigs. Thank you, Superintendent Ryer. And now, before we broadcast our nationwide clues, here is Frank Gallup with a suggestion. These days, the youngsters practically live in their roller skates, even clumping up and down the stairs despite all your warnings. And, of course, they fall occasionally. So that means reaching for your bottle of reliable Sloan's liniment. Yes, for the past two generations, mothers all over the world have helped their children find relief from muscular aches and pains with Sloan's, the family friend in need. All you need do is pat on Sloan's, that's all. Just pat Sloan's on that black and blue mark. Or char Charlie Horse. Tell Sister Sue or young Bobby to stay quiet for a while. In a very few minutes, they'll feel that gentle and beneficial warmth begin to chase the ache right out of their sore and hurting muscles. For Sloan's, like a heat treatment, brings you quick and comforting relief without any painful rubbing or massage. That's why millions count on Sloan's liniment whenever any member of the family is suffering from muscular distress. 
Many of you I know always make sure there's a bottle of Sloan's on your medicine shelf at all times. Just the same, before you go to bed tonight, just check your supply. The past few weeks have been pretty wet and blustery. The kind of weather that so frequently brings stiff necks and sore backs with it. Perhaps your bottle of Sloan's liniment is practically empty. If it is, make a note to get Sloan's liniment from your druggist tomorrow. It's wise to be prepared. And now, the clues. If you have any information concerning these clues, notify your local police, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, or gangbusters at once. For Sloan's Liniment next week, the amazing narrative of Fantasy Farms, a mysterious mansion guarded by an electric eye, dungeons sunk deep into the earth, ammunition hidden in the walls, trick furniture that held enough guns to blow up a battalion of invaders, and still the law enforcement authorities were able to cope with this secret gang, smoke them out of their lair, and break up this vicious mob for all time. Don't miss this gripping Phillips H. Lord public service dramatization of Gangbusters. Give to the Red Cross War Relief Fund and give generously today through your local chapter. <laughs>